Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, <laughs> so I haven't done one of these videos in a very long time. So today's video will be a talking hand video and these are the knives that I've been using in my home now for a good six months. Um, half these knives here I've used in my home for about a month or so and then these are brand new knives that I'm using to replace this current collection. So today is going to be a very long video. I'm going to give you guys really every single thing I think uh, or all my opinions I think about these knives, um, the ones that I've used, and then I'll tell you exactly why these knives were selected for the next upcoming um, you know review. So I'm going to move these knives up and then, you know, take out these knives one by one. Um, this video is really, I would say, it's probably two years, <laughs> two years in the making. Um, I'm actually, maybe even three years. A couple of these knives here I've had for a fairly long time. But I've been wanting to make this video for a long time and I just haven't had a chance to make this video. And um, so I figured, you know, I'm just gonna put all the knives I've used um, over the last couple of years that I think are some of the best knives I've used. And this does not to negate any of the knives reviews I've done in the past, but this is just kind of where I am today. And so, you know, if you guys don't see the knives that you bought from my previous recommendation, don't be so offended. Uh, it's all good. I'm sure those knives are all still really good. Um, but this is just kind of where I am today in terms of what I'm using in my home. And I will do a whole different series of knives that I've tested from the, you know, 50 to 100 dollar range so that video is coming as well um, but for these um, but for this video this is all going to be handmade knives and uh, prices didn't wasn't really a consideration i basically just took the knives and kept the knives that i thought would be good for this video so some of these knives will cost uh, 200 dollars and some of them will cost over 1200 dollars and i'll tell you the prices if i can remember them at the top of my head but some of these knives i bought so long ago that i don't really know what the prices are and um, because of how knife prices can fluctuate, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about pricing. So this is more about the overall performance of each knife and my experience of using them for at least a month to some as, as long as uh, two years at this point. So I'll do my best to leave a link in the video description to as many knives as I can or I'll leave a link to my kit list and that way you guys can go to one place, see all the knives and you know, go from there. Okay, so these knives here actually came directly from my kitchen. This is my kitchen uh, knife drawer and I use a drawer slot style knife holder in my home because I can lock the drawer. I can't really put a knife slot on my countertop so that's why all my knives are sitting in a slot. Um, but these knives here have all been in my home for, like I said, for at least six months now. And um, you know, I'll just really go down the line. There's not, there's not going to be any sort of uh, which one's best, and there's not going to be any sort of category of best, worst. Uh, this is just going to be my opinion of these knives. And so we'll just start with this knife over here. Uh, this is a Moritaka. This is a 240 millimeter Moritaka um, Algami Super or Blue Super. And this knife here, I selected because Moritaka is a very, um, very special knife maker. They've been around for, uh, I think, upwards of like 700 years at this point. And it's one of the oldest knife companies uh, in existence. They actually were making samurai swords back in the day. And the reason why they are such a special knife to me is because they don't charge a whole lot for their knives. Their knives are very reasonable. A 210 millimeter Gyoto starts around $200 or even maybe even less than that for the blue number two. This is the blue super and I think it's like 20 or $30 more for the 210 millimeter. And so this knife here has not been polished, has not been cleaned at all. These knives here, all these knives in this current drawer have not been cleaned. Um, these, what, these five knives over here, after I used them, I did clean them up. I polished them to make sure they're nice and clean. These are brand new, so they don't need polishing at all. Um, but this knife here has been in my home for six months, and you can see it's still in very good shape. There is a bit of for, uh, formation of patina all along the profile of the blade, and on both sides and then the handle handle is still in really good shape um, this is actually made of whole wood or magnolia wood and uh, when I buy my knives when I bring them to my home I always 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 apply some mineral oil on the handle um, f before I even use it and generally speaking if you do that your handles will be kept fairly clean and uh, some people like to let their they're cooking and they're, you know, the handling of the knives oil the handle naturally, that's perfectly fine. I just like to put some oil on my handle and there's nothing wrong with doing it the other way. There's no right or wrong in that regard. 
Um, but in terms of pros on this knife, so this is again, it's a Algami Super. He treats it about 64, maybe 65, and it holds a really nice edge. Now this knife here is pretty interesting because it's the one of the few knives here in terms of the bevel, it's a bit lower. It sits a bit lower than the rest of the knives. And you'll see some of the other knives here, such as this, this Kato. The bevel actually starts about, an, uh, about three in three quarter inches above the cutting edge. And this one on the Moritake, it's about a half an inch above the cutting edge. And so what you'll discover is that over time, as you sharpen this knife and as you use it, you'll find that the blade thickness is probably the only negative about this knife. If I had to pick a negative, I would say that I would prefer the the initial grind of this bell right here be about a quarter inch higher. That will actually help the knife perform better long term. We're talking at least six months. And this is me sharpening the knives, you know, once a month or so. So that's something that is a bit more apparent on this knife than any of the other knives. But for most people, and again, that's me nitpicking. That's me having to pick something negative about this knife. <laughs> it's really not a bad negative. Um, it's not a problem that most people would deal with. It's just when you are using all these knives side by side, you will kind of get a sense of the nuances and the little performance um, pros and cons when you do like mil little minor tweaks um, in terms of bringing the grind up a quarter inch higher. But again, if you're using this knife and this is the only knife in the kitchen, you will never have that complaint. It's a knife aficionado is like me that makes, <laughs> that we whine about those things like that. But the Kori Oshi finish is something um, that's very special on this knife. It's the only knife that you will find that uses a, I would call a, um, a brush pattern along the profile of the Kori Oshi finish. It's something you don't see very often. Most of the time you'll find knives that have a Kori Oshi finish that will be hammered or it will be just unfinished. Uh, it just won't have this really cool sleek look to it. It's very hard to show on camera, but if you look very, very closely, you'll see that there is a brush pattern that goes from heel to tip. And that's something you don't see um, really ever. And that's something that's very special about this knife. One of the things that drew me to this knife, actually. Um, but also, again, going back to the heritage, uh, the heritage of this company, this knife here, if this was a Italian brand, this would be a $2,000 knife <laughs> easily. You know, the Italians can find a way to make sure that you pay for that heritage of a brand. Not so the Japanese. Again, in terms of heritage, if Moritaka priced their knives, you know, pricing in the heritage into their knives, this definitely would be at least $1,000, uh, but it's not. Um, the fit and finish is okay. Yeah, it's maybe or six or seven in terms of fit and finish along the spine and the choil. Not fantastic, but it definitely is not gonna cut you. Uh, there's no sharp edges or any, anywhere that will hurt you. But I can, um, you know, I'm, I wouldn't mind having it better polished, but for the price that you're paying, it's really a fantastic knife. Now I'm skipping this knife for a reason. I'll go back to that knife after this one right here. So this is the Akazawa. Now, this is a very, uh, very interesting knife. This was the knife that almost made me quit. If you guys watched my channel, I think, you know, two or three years back, this was a knife that destroyed my hand in the rope cut test. A fantastic knife. And uh, it's using Algami Super. He treated from 65, maybe even 66. A very, very hard knife. And it's got a stainless steel cladding. A fairly thin knife, uh, you know, the spine thickness, you're looking about maybe 2.3 millimeters, 2.2 millimeters. And uh, it's a really good knife. It's a knife that I have not been able to get rid of. Uh, every single time I talk about getting rid of it, I kind of hold back. <laughs> so it's a knife that I really enjoy using. Um, you can see it's pretty worn down. The handle, this is the ebony handle. Normally ebony handles hold up a lot better than this. Um, this has been in my home now for two years. And I've polished it, I've repolished it and cleaned the edge and profile off a few times. So it still looks fairly new. Um, but the last six months, I've left a patina form naturally. And you can see there is, you know, there's patina formation on the cutting edge. Not a big deal at all. Uh, there is not going to be any sort of um, rust, really rust dangers if you let your knife form patinas. There is a bit of a little pit spotting here. Um, this board, sometimes the water can hold inside of the slots. And so that's basically what happened there. There was a little bit of water that was, I don't know, splashed onto the, the slot and it just left a little bit of a darker patina. 
that would probably turn into rust if I don't take care of that in a few months or so. But I'll, I'll polish it up before I do something else with this knife. But this knife here, um, price at 350 So, you know, all these knives here will range in, again, like I said, 200 350 I was hoping to find a knife that can perform as well as this one for under $200 or under 250 350 is not, um, it's not unreasonable for this for this knife um, also considering that you have an ebony handle so ebony handles cost anywhere between 75 to 120 dollars more um, depending on where you buy it and, uh, and when you buy it but this has an ebony handle so you have to factor that into the price um, so it is 350 uh, at regular price but you do have an ebony handle and if they change it to like a, a magnolia handle like this one you'll probably you can probably shave 70 bucks or 80 bucks off the, the handle or off of the entire knife just by doing that. But Akazawa always packages pretty much all their knives with ebony handles. Again, no complaints there. I really enjoy using ebony handles. They are much more water resistant. Um, they have a nice, really, really nice feel to them when you're using them. And they hold up much better than Magnolia handles uh, long term. But this knife here, uh, it's one of my favorites. It's a knife that I've always enjoyed using. And it's a knife that I've always, uh, I've always come back to when I say I want to, you know, kind of start a new collection of knives. Um, but yeah, so a really great knife, priced at 350, and it's a knife that I don't think anyone will regret buying. All right, so this is the Yoshihiro Aogami Super. Now, this knife was really special to me because this was a knife that I was wanting to find to replace this knife. Um, up, until the, up until this knife here, I couldn't really find a knife in this price range, Aogami Super, uh, under $200, under $200 at, uh, to, for a 210 millimeter Gyoto with hand engraving. That's also something that's definitely need to be noted. You don't really see many knives in this price range with hand engraving, and uh, that's something that's definitely, you've gotta acknowledge that. The fit and finish of this knife is very good. Uh, it's not something that I expected from a $200 knife. When I first bought this knife, all the specs look the same between these two knives in terms of their heat treatment, um, the overall profile, their length, but upon closer inspection, what makes this knife here from Yoshihiro so special is the fit and finish. Now, it's hard for you guys to see from where you're standing or from where you're sitting, but the fit and finish of the Yoshihiro is actually uh, slightly better. The Choil, for example, it's a bit more rounded. It has more of a, an, I would call it a, um, it's a rounded Choil at the edge. So. If this one, if you're looking at this choil on the Akazawa, it's more or less a perpendicular handle than the chamfer the edge. So it has a really nice finish though. It's not sharp at all. But the finishing on the Yoshihiro is not necessarily a chamfer. It's more like a rounded choil, a rounded of the round <laughs> choil. So it's really comfortable to hold, especially for your middle finger in a pinch grip. This is a much more comfortable to handle to hold. Um, this knife here is actually more comfortable to hold in a pinch grip with your middle finger grinding or rubbing up against the choil than the Akazawa. And other than that though, the performance is virtually identical to that knife. Again, I do believe that this is heat treated to a 65 on the Rockwell scale. Now again, the handle is not an ebony handle, it's a magnolia handle. It works fine, not a fancy handle, but given the price range and given the performance, uh, it's a fine handle for that. If you really wanted to, you know, for someone, for someone who wants to keep this knife long term, um, this knife here, I'm not going to keep it for my personal collection long term, but if I did, I would definitely change it out for an ebony handle, like on the Akazawa. And uh, in that case, you know, you would invest anywhere between $250 to $270 on this knife, which is a fantastic price for a knife of this performance level. I haven't polished the patina off. Uh, patina is really easy to polish off. I use a wash soda. It's called wash soda, which is a sodium carbonate, not sodium bicarbonate. Uh, and then I basically polish my knives with a, either a pink coil cloth or the coil cream and that gets these knives basically looking new like these knives up here but i'll i'll do a separate video on that so again this is the yoshihiro Aogami super 
Yeah, so in terms of value, you definitely have a lot more value in the Yoshihiro. And, uh, you know, again, it doesn't take away from the Akazawa, but um, they perform, again, virtually the same. And it's just you're looking at saving a little bit of money on the Yoshihiro. All right, so this here is a Origami Super by Yoshimi Kato. Um, this is a very special knife. This knife here is probably one of the most underrated knives I have used. You don't really hear a lot about uh, Yoshimi Kato. Um, he's not big on Instagram. He's not big on social media. He just makes really good knives. He's a very humble guy. Um, this knife here sometimes, I think because of his design, they're much more muted than something like a Yu Kurosaki or even an Anryu. His knives can sometimes be overlooked. But in terms of overall performance, this is just a fantastic knife. The choil, the gooseneck choil, very comfortable to hold. The polishing of the spine is very nice. I'm a huge fan of rustic and muted finishes. So to me, the Nashiji finish is really special. Um, he treated to about a 64, 65, definitely feels like it. Again, the performance of this knife here is just absolutely fantastic. The grind, starting you know about, about three quarter inches above the cutting edge, really gives this knife a great cutting profile. And this is a walnut handle. Um, it's getting a bit rough. Again, I didn't polish this handle. I didn't put any sort of pin, uh, finish on it. I just wanted to see you know, over the course of six months how it would look. It's held up okay. Um, I would like it to be a bit... Um, more polished than this, but again, I just uh, I kind of mistreated these knives on purpose just to see how they look. The patina formation, this one is a lot more gentle than what you'll see on the Moritaka, um, even though they're using basically the same steel. The reason being is that on the Kato, I actually applied mineral oil every night, um, or actually not every night, every week for basically the entire life of this knife. And you can see that the patina formation is really light and it's not um, this is basically it looks like it's a stainless steel but it's not if you're standing here you can see there's an ever ever slight um, hint of patina forming but very very mild and that's basically what happens when you put a either a mineral oil on your knife before you go to bed or before or after you use once a week um, it will do this for your knives so for people who are getting into carbon steel knives having mineral oil is really handy because you can still use the knives as usual um, just make sure you dry them off and just apply some of that mineral oil uh, once a week is really all you need. If you want to get more than that, then once every two or three days is fine. But uh, that way you can have a knife that performs as well as a carbon steel knife without having to worry about rust forming too quickly. Um, again, hand engraved on the blade and just a really special knife. This knife here, um, I've really grown to love this knife and um, Kato's knives are really special. And again, I got to meet him in Ichizen uh, last or two years ago now. Very humble guy, and just makes a very um, a very good knife. Okay, so this knife here is by Saji-san, and uh, Saji-san, he makes very interesting knives. And so this is here is the Kuritsuke. It's a 210 Kuritsuke with the black oxide finish um, Damascus. Now, a lot of times when you pick up a Damascus cladding with uh, the black oxide, it's really rough and um, can be... Uh, there's a lot of friction that happens. If you use the Kramer um, by Zwilling SG2 version, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, when you're cutting larger ingredients like melons, um, potatoes, really starchy ingredients, it sticks with the knife a whole lot. Not so here on the Saji. Um, the finishing on the Saji is a bit more fine. It feels more like 3,000, 4,000 grit sandpaper than the, you know, versus the, um, the Kramer. But what's really special about his knives is the spine thickness. Now, if you look at most of these knives here, you'll see that the spine thickness is really thick at the heel and then tapers out, uh, you know, all along the taper to the tip. Now, Sanji, what he does a lot differently is he keeps a relative consistency from the heel all the way to the tip. So the distal taper, it's much more gradual than what you'll find on, say, the Yukurosaki, for example. If you look here, uh, the Yukurosaki, it's 
about the same thickness at the spine, but if you come close to the tip, it's much more thin than the Sanji. And so what that does on the cutting board is that it gives your knife a much more stable feel during cutting. Um, so it's actually quite nice, you know, uh, it's, it's, it takes a little bit of getting used to when you're going back and forth between these knives because a lot of these knives, even though they have, you know, really thick spines, they're actually quite nimble because the cutting edge is, or not the cutting edge, but the top half of the blade is quite thin. And so, so Sanji's knives maybe not be, you know, they're maybe not quite as nimble per se, but they're very stable and they're very easy to use on the cutting board. Uh, and they're very comfortable to hold as well. So that's something I really enjoy about his knives. They don't have the pizzazz of some of the, you know, the, <laughs> the younger makers out there. Um, they're just very, uh, very good knives to use, very comfortable knives to use. And I really enjoy the way that the tapering is on his knives. I really enjoy the fact that the tapering is much more consistent and much more gradual from the heel to tip. And um, his knives are pretty much the only knives I've used with this sort of tapering system. Um, so it just makes it very special. And again, you have the hand engraving and you can see here the handle, the ebony handle is held up quite nicely here. It's been in my drawer now for at least six months and uh, it's just starting to wear. It's uh, losing its luster, but I'll polish it. I'll do a separate video where I polish all these handles back to where they were before, maybe even better. So yeah, this is by Saji. This is using SG2 core steel as well. Oh, this is the Unryu. <laughs> so this here is to me a very, uh, probably one of the most significant knives I currently own. And I've said this before, um, you know, making my video about uh, reasons to, you know, reasons why I should buy handmade artisan knives is because Anryu is now retired. And so you can't buy these knives brand new anymore. Um, you might, you know, there might be some retailers that have some old stock they're gonna hold on to for a little while. But I've always said in the past that these are gonna be extremely valuable one day. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if his knives will jump 150 to $200 per knife at this point for a 210. This is using blue number two. And you can see the, the Tsuchime finish is really nicely, really nicely done, um, very well thought out. The hammering, um, you know, I actually watched him make this knife and each of these Tsuchime hammer marks were, was done one at a time. And he moves the knife an inch, you know, like a, like, you know, a quarter inch, a quarter inch and hammers it down, quarter inch, hammers it down. And so seeing him make this knife is very special. And this knife here, the performance is fantastic. It is um, one of the best performing knives I own. The gooseneck choil, very comfortable. The polishing of the spine, again, very comfortable. The heel, the thickness of the heel is about three, three and a half millimeters or so, and very, very thin at the cutting edge. Um, so in terms of overall performance, this is just a fantastic knife. And you can see this is the walnut handle and it's starting to crack now. Um, not really crack crack, but it's just starting to just one split there. And um, just again, I don't, I should treat this knife better than I do. <laughs> but when I'm reviewing knives, I kind of uh, mistreat them intentionally. Um, but again, this knife here, you can see the patina formation is very light and very mild. Uh, this also has the same treatment as the Kato with mineral oil on the cutting edge. So um, you can use mineral oil. I use Tsubaki oil. That's basically what I have at home. Tsubaki oil is just a fancy mineral oil. Uh, I see it's not a it's not a mineral oil. It doesn't have any petroleum products in it. Um, very mild, very easy to use, and also leaves a nice um, finish on your knives for a long time. So if you were to store your knives for weeks or months at a time, I definitely recommend Tsubaki oil over mineral oil because it has a better film that develops on your on your knife. But you can see here, the patina is extremely mild and uh, that's all thanks to the Tsubaki oil. But uh, yeah, so this is a really special knife. This is a knife that I am probably gonna keep in my collection for forever. I don't think I'll be willing to sell this knife, uh, mainly because I was with Anryu really just a year before he retired, a year and a half before he retired. And you know, had to sit down, uh, got a chance to meet him, sit down with him, had sushi, uh, lunch with him, which was great. So this knife here is very special to me. 
See, I told you guys, <laughs> I told you that if you guys can find an Onryu, buy them because they are they are not going to be in stock much longer. And sure enough, just a few months ago, he uh, or even just maybe a month ago, um, his retirement was announced. All right, so this baby here, <laughs> baby blue is what some people like to call this knife. This is a Yukurosaki with the blue turquoise handle. Um, these knives are probably the most sought after knives in the knife world right now. Beautiful knives, very comfortable to hold. Um, this is actually my nice wife. Um, this is the knife that I bought and and just basically having a knife drawer just for her to use. I use it once in a while, but basically I'm just letting her use it. She really enjoys this knife. Um, this is the largest knife that she's willing to use, uh, mainly because of how, how comfortable the handle is. This is using VG10, and um, that's something that's very significant because now, oftentimes you'll see VG10 um, as kind of looked down upon and even written off by many people because there are so many fake VG10s on the market. Or well, I shouldn't call it fake, I should call it um, Chinese made or Chinese manufactured VG10. If you ever get a chance to use a Japanese made VG10 that's been hand forged versus a Chinese made VG10, you'll see there is a world of difference between the two qualities of steels. Uh, Yuo Kurosaki or any handmade VG10 that's made in Japan is going to perform or outperform any VG10 made in China. I guarantee you that. Um, and so this knife here, um, so other than the fact that it's using VG10 and it's got the Fugin finish, uh, it's just an overall really well packaged knife. And so my wife loves using it. It's going to stay in our collection for pretty much forever. We're not going to get rid of this knife. And uh, so yeah, that's why it's still in my knife drawer. Okay, so these are two petties I've got here, but both by Yoshihiro. This one here on the right is the Agami Super, and this is 135 millimeters. And then the one on the left here is 150 millimeters, and using the ZA18. Now ZA18 is interesting. Um, it feels similar to VG10. Um, I don't think it feels quite as um, dense as VG10, but apparently it can get harder than VG10. So this is heat treated from I think rated to a 62 to 63. I can't confirm that it is harder or tougher than VG10, but it um, it's been in my knife drawer now for six months, and yeah, it's starting to lose its edge, but it's still cuts fairly well um, so yeah I mean I enjoy it this is it's also got the, the stainless steel Damascus cladding clean great finish overall and so I was just you know I just needed something simple to use in my knife drawer so I picked <laughs> a knife that I knew I would like so the Algomi Super is what I use and my wife will also use the Yoshihiro stainless steel. So this knife and the Yukurosaki is what my wife uses and I use all the other knives in the knife drawer. Okay, so I'm gonna go down the line now and talk about these knives here. And um, so these knives here were actually in my knife drawer prior to this collection here on the left. So that's why they're kind of sitting here. Um, they don't perform any less than these knives here. It's just they were tested at a different time. So that's why they're in a slightly different group than this group over here. Um, this is a Yukurosaki using the VG10 core steel and the Fugin uh, hammering marks. And um, see this reason, this, this knife here was a reason I got this knife with the VG10. Um, but the main reason why I got this specific knife was because I wanted to see how good VG10 was made by Yu Kurosaki. Um, I was convinced that if you used a VG10 knife, hand forged in Japan, made by a Japanese bladesmith, it will outperform any Chinese made VG10. This knife here convinced me of that. Really great knife, um, highly recommended. <laughs> All right, so this here is the SG2. So this is the Shizuku Hemomarx, which is um, a bit more aggressive than the Fugin, um, but it's still very popular. And uh, the biggest thing with the Yukurosaki uh, that people have kind of brought up to my attention, and it's not really a complaint, it's just they're more concerned, is if there are gonna be some sort of food, you know, food particles stuck inside the Hemomarx or discoloration problems, 
you can see there really isn't. Um, I can say that maybe in a few of the really deeper marks, there might be some you know, darker coloring going on. Now, I wanted to test the difference between SG2 and VG10. That's why I had these knives being used side by side. And quite honestly, um, daily use at home, they feel very similar. The main difference between SG2 and VG10 at this point is edge retention. Um, this knife here was in my home for, oh, I would say, closer to two or three months. Um, that knife was in my home for a little bit shorter than this knife here. Maybe two months, maybe two and a half months. Um, and I did notice that the edge on the VG10 did wear a little bit faster than the SG2. But in terms of daily cutting, um, actual performance, they are they have the same grind. You can see that the grind on the U Kurosakis are quite high. Um, this knife here has the grind. The grind is about a, an inch above the cutting edge. Um, same thing with this one here, it's about an inch above the cutting edge. And so they tend to perform extremely aggressive. So if you're looking for a very aggressive knife that performs, uh, that performance is kind of the utmost thing that you're looking for, you know, the most utmost importance. Your Kurosaki is really good for that. His newest knife, his um, Aogami Super version of this knife right here, the, the bevel actually starts even higher. It's about almost two inches or like a, an inch and a quarter above the cutting edge. So the knife performs extremely aggressive. And uh, the good thing is that that knife is heat, treat, heat treated to a, a 65 or so. Um, this one here is heat treated from a 63 to 64. Uh, so it's, you know, it's hard enough to handle a really thin grind, but uh, there's something to be aware of. Uh, just because a knife is thinner, it's not always better. But in his case, you have a really thick spine, a really thick you know, tan going to the spine. And so you have a nice grip on the blade but the cutting edge performs extremely, extremely well because of that really aggressive grind that he puts on his knives. Um, but overall, you're never gonna have any complaints with the Yu Kurosaki. I have yet to have, uh, to hear any real complaints about his knives. Uh, okay, so this here is a Niigara. This one here is a 210. Uh, it looks a bit shorter than a 210, maybe because, because of how it's cut, but this is a 210. And uh, this I cut a couple years ago, back in when I was in Japan. And uh, you can see it's been in my home for a few months. Um, <laughs> the Koryuchi finish is wearing a little bit unevenly. Um, I think because when I'm washing this knife, I kind of squeeze as I go down the, uh, you know, the profile of the knife. And uh, mainly, maybe I squeeze harder as I come down, but uh, you can see the Koryuchi finish here. It's a bit more worn than the rest of this knife here. So, you know, something to, to take note of. But you can see here, it's held up extremely well. Um, it probably has three months or so of use in my home. Um, the RC2 core steel, fantastic. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this knife. No complaints about it. Um, this is a knife that, you know, this brand or this manufacturer, um, it's really, I would call this a mini, a mini manufacturer. And I would call this even a, an artisan factory. There's only four people working for Niigara in terms of the production side. There's two master, bladesmiths and then there's two interns or you know two apprentices and uh, that's really it but for the quality of knives that they're putting out and the amount of knives the range of products they're putting out is really incredible and uh, this knife here is uh, very close to their bunkus uh, style this is technically their um, karitsuke uh, most karitsukes tend to have a thinner uh, a, a shorter height at the cutting tip versus the heel. But um, Nigara does something a little bit differently. They keep the height fairly consistent. Um, so nice and tall blade. I actually like that a lot. And uh, just, this is a really rustic blade. If you actually get a chance to hold this knife and touch it, very rustic. And it just has a really interesting feel to it. And this is again, um, packaged with the ebony handle with the silver copper ring. Um, the luster is just starting to go now. Um, after about three months, uh, two or three months, an ebony handle should be polished up either with the mineral oil or something. Um, I didn't do that, so you can see that the luster is starting to go away. But overall, the, the knife has held up really beautifully. I haven't sharpened this one yet. Uh, I didn't feel like it needed sharpening, so it's, um, you know, it's still fairly sharp. Um, but the most important thing here is the knife has just held up really well. Uh, the performance is really good. The grind of these knives, really incredible grind. 
Um, they're just a work of art and something I really enjoy about using their knives. All right, so this here is an Ikeda. All right, so this here is uh, a very, mm, it's a very special knife to me. <laughs> so this is actually made by Takumi Ikeda and who's actually Anryu's uh, nephew. So this knife here was made years ago. This, uh, I wanna say this is actually three to four years old now. Uh, so this knife here is actually using Aogami Super and uh, this was actually kind of, mm, I think marketed as the Masamoto KS Killer and um, priced at around three hundred dollars or so, maybe a little bit more than that at the time. And uh, it's a really cool knife. It's basically a sabatier profile, and you can see here that he has tremendous talent. Uh, this is a, a really young artisan, a young bladesmith, and he's very bold in his design. It's a Damascus cladding, but really, really thinly layered Damascus. Beautiful polish. You can see that the polishing of his knives um, kind of resembles a lot of an Anryu. And you can see that there is a lot of resemblance that, uh, you know, that, that uh, it runs in the family, you know. <laughs> um, what's really cool about his knives, his polishing, it's a satin polish. He doesn't put mirror polishes on his knives very often. And so this knife here is gone from the market. Uh, the reason, that's part of the reason why I've kept it for so long is that I was hoping this knife would come back so I can do a proper review on it so people can see it. Uh, but I've held on for this knife for a long time and it hasn't come back. So um, Ikeda-san has kind of shifted his focus to the Masakage line and kind of dropped his line. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why that's the case. Uh, my suspicion is that He's keeping the Masakage line going to kind of as a, as a tribute to his uncle, Anryu. Um, that's my guess, that's my, my personal guess. But you can see that there is a tremendous potential from this young man um, as a knife maker. A very beautiful knife. Um, this is a 240mm Agami Super, he treated to about 64, maybe 65. And uh, patina is really light, you can see that there is... Um, you know, the patina formation in this light, uh, I've polished this knife, by the way. I've cleaned it up. I haven't, um, there is a little bit of hard patina formating, uh, forming at the cutting edge, and uh, that actually requires uh, maybe the rust erasers to pull off. Um, the coil polish is what I use in this knife. It didn't quite do um, it enough. It polished it well, but um, it just wasn't aggressive enough for the really deep polishing. Again, um, I've had this knife here for a long time, and so it requires a little bit more than just polishing compound. And uh, other than that though, it's held up really well. Uh, it's a knife that I've really enjoyed using. And uh, yeah, so I've actually applied one layer of my beeswax and mineral oil uh, compound on the handle, and it's held up quite nicely. But yeah, really great knife. So this here is called the Workhorse. Now this is made by Kiyoshi Kato-san, and you may also know him as Yoshiaki Fujiwara. And uh, you know, they, Fujiwara makes a, a wide range of knives. Um, this is probably at this point, I would say the most, or one of the most sought after knives in the knife world, probably top three, I would say. And uh, it's a fantastic knife. It's a workhorse. I mean, it's definitely very aggressive. Uh, really wide spine. I mean, you're looking at a four, four and a half millimeter spine, and then it comes, you know, then you've got a nice aggressive distal taper here. Um, but people have always wanted this knife. Um, I was lucky to, I was lucky enough to pick up this knife in Japan uh, two years ago, and um, I've had it in my, in my home again um, for about two months or so. And uh, you can see this little bit of um, fine, really fine hairline scratches on the profile. Um, the polishing that I, you know, I use again, I use the coil polish. It took off most of the, most of the scratches, but there's some slightly more aggressive hairline scratches that are still on the profile. Um, so this, the, this, the cladding of this knife is a little bit softer, uh, which is fine. I mean, that's kind of what they're, what they're made for. Uh, you can also see that the carbon steel has got a bit of, uh, this is actually using white number two, so you know, the white steel. Uh, the patino formation is slightly more aggressive right here that I couldn't really polish away with just the coil polish. Um, this would just require maybe something a bit more aggressive. Um, you know, maybe the rust eraser would probably do it fairly well. 
Um, but the handle, uh, this has, again, this is kind of what handles could look like. This is what the handles look like, brand new, nice and vibrant. And this is after a couple months of use. And then the same handle after six months of use, right? So as long as you treat them you know, with a little bit of oil, they hold up fairly well. Um, magnolia wood doesn't absorb too much water, um, but it does It does kind of discolor over time. And sometimes they can get uh, kind of grayish if your hands are really dirty. But for the most part, magnolia handles hand up fairly well, or hold up fairly well. Uh, negatives about this knife there uh, from my personal vantage point the only real negative about this knife is that you really cannot find them <laughs> for sale anywhere um, so when you find these for sale usually it's an owner that's flipping this knife on on reddit or some sort of knife forum um, this is probably one of the most flippable knives uh, you can possibly buy, uh, buy at this point and uh, yeah so I'm not gonna flip it I'm gonna keep this knife but uh, it's a great knife and, um, you know, considering the fact that this knife here is about $1,200, it better perform well. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is, I think, yeah, I, yeah, as a matter of fact, this is the most expensive knife in the entire lineup. So it, it definitely does perform quite well. Is it the best performing knife I've ever used? Hmm. That's a tall order. I would say it's definitely top three. Um, it is that good of a knife. Um, but again, we're, we're literally just splitting hairs at this point. Uh, all these knives here will perform beautifully in the kitchen. Um, it doesn't matter what you own, uh, no matter how expensive, it, your cooking will not be improved just by the, you know, the knife that you're using, uh, at least in my personal opinion, because if, I, if my cooking skills were increased by the number of knives I own, I would be the best cook in the world, <laughs> or definitely top three in the world. Uh, but yeah, I mean this knife here, no complaints. Uh, if you can find this knife uh, and you can afford it, it's a great knife. But again, it's over a thousand dollars if you can find it. And most of the time, you're gonna find it, um, you know, used. And um, for the most part, I think people who own these knives will take care of them fairly well. So I don't think you have to worry there. Um, I I was lucky enough to buy this knife brand new. Um, but yeah, great knife, uh, twelve hundred dollars. Is it worth it? Uh, it really is up to you, but uh, it's a great knife. I, I've got nothing to say, nothing negative to say about this knife other than the fact that it's just quite expensive. Okay, so these knives are all brand new here. Let me just bring them down and uh, I'll just kind of just talk about them real briefly here. And, oh, okay. And, uh, and so you'll understand why I have these knives here. Okay, so this is the Nigara, again, 210. Um, really the same profile as that knife up there, but it's got the Migaki polish, so a semi-mirror polish. And uh, lots, lots of people have been asking about this polish um, and just about the, this knife in general. So I figured I'd buy one just to use it for myself and see how much the difference between the Migaki and the Kuriuchi finish. Um, other than that though, same cutting profile, same great fit and finish. Really beautiful polish on the spine and the choil. Um, really nice and rounded and polished. I like that a lot. Using the Wenge handle, their knives feel very substantial. Uh, it's almost like the metal that they're using is much denser than your average knife. So they have a really nice feel to them. And uh, you know, it's a beautiful knife. So that's why we got this one here. I'm a huge fan of bunkas and they make a bunka, but their bunkers are 165 millimeters. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I already have a short knife here with the Yu Kurosaki. Um, I just wanted something a little bit longer, so I bought the 210 millimeter Kuritsuke version, which uh, is very similar to the Bunka. So, yeah, that's kind of why I have this particular shape. So, that's this knife here. Um, in terms of my favorite length, this is the 240. Um, I've always said in all of my videos, my favorite knife length are 240 to 250 millimeters. This here is essentially the same as this knife over here in a traditional Gyoto profile. Um, but the main reason why I got this one over the matte finish, um, I actually personally prefer the matte finish over the Migaki, is because of this knife right here, the Anryu. Now, um, the 210s I can get, or actually I got this one here, 240s, everything on Anryus are completely sold out everywhere. So I figured, you know what? 
um, after using this knife for a while and I had you know a chance to get this knife here I said their pro their polishing is very similar you've got this beautiful satin polish um, you know kind of this hazy mirror polish and I thought you know maybe this would be a good compromise in terms of the way it performs and the way it looks I'm using SG2 core steel uh, you, know, uh, you know so it's like a uh, I wouldn't call it yin and yang of each other, but it's very similar and, and also in the length that I wanted at 240. And so that's the number one reason, <laughs> kind of a, a more personal reason why I got the polished version over the matte finish. Um, but you know, I just, I love the way the, I mean, I love the finishing of this knife and I've always, I love the finishing of this knife too. <laughs> so I, I can't lie there. Um, but also it's an SG2 R2 stainless steel. Um, great for my home with uh, my wife using the knives and we've got kids running around. Sometimes we kind of forget and we'll leave a knife on the cutting board. So having a stainless steel in my home is actually quite handy. But uh, that's, that's why I've got this particular knife uh, with this polish and in the 240. The 240 being my favorite length and the Migaki being closest to the Anryu. And it's, and it's a Nigara. <laughs> Nigaras are awesome. I mean, they're some of the, some amazing, amazing knives. Um, just for me using this knife right here, I know that I'm going to enjoy these knives here. Uh, this is a Kobayashi. This knife here, I had a chance to check out two years ago when I was in Japan. And when I saw the knife, it was the best, best finishing I have ever, ever seen. And so since then, uh, you know, I made it a point to try to get one and I uh, got one here. So this is a 210 version, um, super, super light. This is uh, definitely qualifies as a laser. The spine thickness on this particular knife, it's about two millimeters. I mean, this is, you know, holding this knife here by far, it's the lightest knife that I've got. Um, and it's a really simple knife. I love the way it looks. Uh, this one here is an SG2 core steel and or an R2 core steel stainless cladding but the polishing the finishing of this knife is like no other I've never seen a knife at this price point that has a better polishing um, it is just you know if I if I can use the term perfect it is quite quite perfect um, visually speaking that is I'm not going to I'm not saying that the performance is going to be the best um, but from a visual standpoint there are no mistakes on this knife. There's no hairline scratches. There's no, you know, uh, uneven polishing on the profile, on the cutting edge. Uh, I mean, it is literally a perfect, visually perfect knife. So I'm really excited about this knife. <laughs> so this is going into my test collection. All right, so this is by Kai Shin. And this knife here, is a um, blue number two he treated to about a 64 on the rock wall scale this knife here uh, the reason i got this knife here is because it's a taller gyoto it's about a 49 or maybe even 50 millimeters at the cutting edge here for from heel to spine um, a bit taller than most gyotos its size most you know gyotos in this length will be in the 44 to maybe 47 range so this is a bit taller than what you'll find on most gyotos um, the koryuchi finish is quite good the polishing uh, of his knives are actually quite nice as well. Uh, really thick, really thick spine. You can take a look at the, the, the spine here. Um, coming into the tang, you're looking at five, maybe even six millimeters in thickness. Then you've got a nice tapering to the cutting edge. Not super aggressive, but uh, you know, thin enough to where it keeps the knife fairly thin and fairly light. Uh, but a beautiful, a beautiful handle. And uh, yeah, so I'm actually really, really excited about using Kaishin knives. Okay, so this one here, this here is a very significant knife because it's going to challenge two very interesting knives. So this is made by Nakamura and it is going to compete against the Yoshihiro and Mm -hmm. the Akazawa so maybe I should move the knives behind me huh <laughs> uh, so let's move these knives here okay let's do that okay so here's the thing 
these two knives are on paper are identical they are twins you have an agami super core steel for both you've got it you know 210 millimeters and you've got the same price they're both 200 dollars um octagonal handle with a buffalo horn ferrule and you also have a tiger handle with a buffalo and feral. <laughs> so they are very similar. Uh, in every way, they are the same knife. Until sitting here, closer inspection, they are quite different. The tang thickness uh, the, you know, on the Nakamura is a bit thicker. And it has a slightly more aggressive polishing on the choil. Which is going to be interesting to see in terms of actual use, how that's going to feel. Right now, they feel pretty much identical, so I can't say which one's actually going to be more comfortable. The handle, I like the handle. Um, they both feel great. Uh, they actually feel very similar. Um, this one definitely is nicer looking because of the marbling of the buffalo horn, but that's just cosmetics. Um, the handle, it's a little bit, th I would say it's a little bit, th maybe slightly thinner on the Nakamura, but again, that's uh, very minor. So I'm curious to see in terms of performance how they're going to feel. I suspect that they're going to feel pretty much identical. And, um, and you know, I can, <laughs> um, other than the choil being slightly different, um, everything else is very similar. The spine thickness is virtually the same. Um, so they literally are twins. I mean, they're they're different, made by different people because you can see the grinding of the choil is actually quite different. It's pretty hard to see from where you're standing that the grinding is actually quite different between the two knives. They resemble each other, but they're actually quite different on the choil. Um, so yeah, I'm actually quite curious to see how they're going to perform. Um, I think these two are definitely going to take the crown for best performance, you know, knife under two hundred dollars or at $200. Uh, they both have hand engraving, which is really nice as well. Uh, that's something that's quite hard to find in this price range. Um, polishing on the, both these knives are fantastic. I'm really curious to see how they actually will perform. Um, I think the Nakamura on my right here is slightly... It's not quite as tall and the belly is a bit straighter than the Yoshi Hero. Uh, so I'm curious to see how that's gonna feel on the cutting board. But, uh, you know, for $200, I think these two knives here are definitely going to take the crown for best performance, um, best knives under $200 uh, with a heat treatment of 64, 65, and uh, yeah, so I'm excited to use these knives. So that's why I've got this Nakamura here. Um, again, it's replicating a kind of a twin of this knife, but I think it's worth considering. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people are going to ask, what are the differences between the two knives being priced the same, same steel? you know visually almost identical um i think a lot of people are gonna kind of have a hard time choosing between these two knives please keep in mind that everything in this video is not to negate everything i've said in the past um, all the knives that i've reviewed in the past are still great knives um, they're just different um, i've just kind of moved into a more artisan you know kind of a more artisan focused knife making um, over the last couple of years of my channel um from the Kato on, these were some of the best made knives I have ever used. And so, you know, this batch of knives is not worse or better than this batch. It was just used first, so that's why it's in this section here. These are my most more recent reviews. So I'll do my best to leave a link in the video description to as many knives as I can, or I'll leave a link to my kit list, and that way you guys can go to one place, see all the knives, and, you know, go from there. Um, but all these knives here um, are great knives. You know, I didn't want to kind of do a best knife of the year because to me, that's kind of in a way insulting the bladesmiths who make them because they pour their heart and souls into making these knives. So I don't feel like it's proper or fair or even respectful of me to kind of pick best performing knives, you know, so and so. Um, so all these knives here will perform great. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed with any of these knives here. Um, you know, and all these knives offer something different. Um, you know, you have your budget knives, your $200 knives, um, you have your taller Gyotos, you have your high polish, super, super amazing polished Gyotos, you have your $1,000, you know, workhorse. Uh, and then you have your Yu Kurosaki's really aggressively designed, finished, 
um, just all these knives are gonna offer somebody something. And I think that uh, you know, if you were in the market for any of these knives, they'll all make you a very happy owner of, of these knives. Uh, again, sorry the video was so long. Um, this was a video that was a long time coming. Um, I have a lot to say about these knives. These knives have been a huge part of my life. So I feel like a video um, should not be rushed. And I feel like a video should just be natural and should just explain what I needed to explain for these knives. <clears throat> you guys may be wondering, what am I gonna do with all these knives here? Um, so the Unryu, I'm gonna keep for myself because Unryu is no longer making knives. This is a very special knife to me. I'm gonna keep this one. And the Yu Kurosaki, I'm gonna keep because it's my wife's knife. <laughs> so I'm not gonna mess with that. Um, and I probably will keep this uh, Nigara as well because I really enjoy using this knife. Um, and I probably will keep the <laughs> the kato um the workhorse um other than that though every other knife in this you know, other than those one two three or four knives um all of these other knives will go up for auction uh, to my patreon supporters at some point hopefully in the next you know two or three months as i'm kind of shifting things around um so all those knives that you guys saw will go up for auction um to my patreon supporters uh whenever i get them up and running and then these knives will go into my knife uh, review drawer and if you guys want me to review other knives just let me know in the comments I will pick up some knives I'll add, add, you know, add them to the collection um, but basically in about five or six months I will do a review of all these knives and then we'll switch out another five or six knives and uh, we'll do another review then I probably will do individual reviews of these knives fairly soon I think a lot of people want to see individual reviews I'll see what I can do I can't promise that I'll do you know individual reviews for every one of these knives but I'll do what I can for certain knives uh yeah so anyways guys thank you for being here and i'll catch you guys in the next video